So, I went to go see 300 Rise of an Empire. It's directed by Nomura, who brought us the film Smart People, and aside from that, nothing much beyond commercials. And it stars Sullivan Stapleton and uh, Eva Green, and I gotta say, it's, it's a bit on the fake CGI bloody side. Uh, just oceans of blood. N no, really, there's, there's a scene where you, you know, look out at the ocean from the shore and it's just red with blood, so oceans of blood. Now, like the original 300 before, this film is very, 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 very tenuously based upon actual history. Um, whereas the first film dealt with the Spartans and the Battle of Thermopylae, this one deals with the Athenians and the Battle of Salamis. Except they kind of throw out the entire Battle of Salamis and just take the fact that the Athenians were horribly outnumbered and in the ocean, because the Battle of Salamis is kind of like um, the naval version of the Battle of Thermopylae, near as I've been able to figure out. Um, so... Eh. But uh, throw history aside, because really you're not seeing this movie for the history, you're seeing the movie for the action. And you know, when you have a film where they actually turn Xerxes into a god, you, you really can't call it a history film at that point, it's just fantasy set in the real world. Story and plot-wise, the film's okay at best. It's more than a little cliché at times, and none of the characters are really fleshed out or interesting, so you're kind of watching this mass of faceless goons fight each other. You don't really get a lot of um, impact when anyone dies or gets injured or you know, there's even in any, in any danger. Um, the only real exception is Eva Green's villain, Artemisia. Even then, it's nothing fantastic, but she is kind of a fun character to an extent. Uh, again, a little cliché, but, but fun enough. Uh, of course, you know, just like with the history part, people probably aren't going to go see this movie for the stunning uh, dialogue and wonderfully intricate story. Uh, you're here to see the sort of artistic style and the combat, right? I mean, you know, that's that's the the draw of these uh, of these films. Unfortunately, even there, you're going to be disappointed. I mean, visually, this film has one of the most bland, unimpressive color palettes I've seen in a long time. It is quite literally, for the majority of the film, people in blue cloaks on gray boats, on reflective oceans, reflecting the gray sky with gray rocks in the background. So it's just gray with grayish blue and, and dark blue for the majority of the film. It makes it really hard to sort of tell what's going on in a lot of cases. It's just not pretty. I mean, some of the shots might have really worked had there been sort of contrast colors going on, but, but no, no, it's just kind of almost monotone. And, you know, even then, you might have been able to get away with some of that had the fight scenes, had the action been, you know, visceral and fun and interesting to watch. Um, but, uh, again, a little bit of a disappointment. Um, it's, it's nothing special. I mean, I know a lot of people had issues with the fight scenes in the first movie, too. Uh, too much CGI blood, too much slow motion. Uh, valid complaints, I suppose. I, I thought they were fun myself. Um, but uh, a lot of those complaints can really be carried over to this one. Uh, instead of, you know, just a little bit of uh, CGI blood, this one it's just fountains of CGI blood all over the place. And there's a lot of slow motion too, and it's not used to nearly as good of an effect as the first film. The first one sort of used it to stop a frame and give you this almost, you know, comic book still shot. Here it just seems to be like, you know, hey, let's slow it down and show you this fantastic geyser of blood spurting from someone. Uh, and then the fight scenes themselves, uh, they, they... The first movie had really good fight choreography. It, it looked a lot of fun. This one, it doesn't really look like Greek fighting. It looks like martial arts combat for the most part. And it doesn't really, it doesn't really work for me. And in other cases, it's... It just seems more kind of brawl-ish. It's, it's just a very weird inconsistency, and there were some uh, some fights that would have been really cool, except instead of you know doing the nice like fun to watch slow mo, fast mo, you know, it went for fast cut, uh, you know, quick cut shots and shaky cam, and it just it's just all to the detriment of the actual action in this film. It just doesn't hold up. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't hold up. 
I know I've complained a bit about this movie, and it's not because it's horrible. Because it's not. It's just not really all that good. It's just a pale imitation of 300. And that's really all it is. Nothing compares favorably to the original. The, the, the screenplay, the script, the story, it's not as good. The fight scenes aren't as good. The, the color palette, the visuals, they aren't as good. The CGI is not as good. About the only place that it holds up is the acting, which is at least as good, uh, but not really better. You know, hey, not even the beards in this movie are as good. Nothing compares to um, nothing compares to Leonidas's beard in that movie. Here, everyone is just kind of scruffy. They don't have the sort of crazy weird beard going on. It's just, just in general, this movie's nothing fantastic. If if all you're hankering for right now. It's just to go to the theater and see a, a, a big screen action film. Go ahead, this is probably going to scratch that itch for you. But for anyone else, stay away, watch it on, uh, watch it on DVD, something when it comes out. But, but don't pay theater prices for this one. That's, that's all I've got to say. Until next time, folks. Enjoy film.